Well, it's done. I've just finished creating the first draft for my third book using chat GPT-4. But there's something important that you must consider whenever you're creating long form content, anything longer than a blog post or an article when you're using chat GPT. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. Okay, so before we get started, if you want to know how I go about creating my books using ChatGPT4, you can get a prompt guide from the link below. Now, the prompt guide has my entire process, my methods, and the prompts I use to create non-fiction books. Using these prompts, you have absolutely no problems creating first drafts of 30,000, 40,000 words, which then you can polish into finished books. So if you want to know how I create my nonfiction books, grab the prompt guide. I've been constantly refining my, my method over the last three books that I've been writing, and the prompt guide has been updated with all the latest prompts and, and my methods of how I go about it. And just before I get started, I've already started polishing the manuscript and I've completed the edit on five chapters. Now they've gone through a, a reworking, rewording, rephrasing. They've been put through AI detection and they've passed plagiarism check. So if everything goes to plan, my third book should be published next week. Now, if you want a review copy, once again, all you need to do is hit the link below, get the prompt guide. And then once the book is published, I will email everybody on my list and offer them a review copy of the third book. Okay, so what is the secret? to creating long form content with ChatGPT. And as I said, it's not, a, it's not a matter of creating blogs and articles, that's easier. I'm talking about when you're creating books, when you're creating manuscripts of 30, 40,000 words. There, there are things that you must consider because ChatGPT only remembers so much. It's called a context window. In ChatGPT 3.5, it only remembers back 3,000 words. Okay, approximately 3,000 words. And that's not just what ChatGPT has responded with, that's also what you've prompted. So if you've been putting in long prompts, giving it context, priming it, and that sort of stuff, all that counts to those 3,000 words. And then as your conversation with ChatGPT goes on and you're prompting it to, to write chapter content or outlines or examples and that sort of stuff, as soon as it can only see the last 3,000 words, and so it can start to forget things, it can start to forget context. It can start to forget your outline. It can start to forget your, your, your special instructions, your styling instructions and that sort of stuff. And so you have to do something called repriming. Now, ChatGPT4 has a much larger context window. It can remember a lot more. I don't know whether it's 20,000 words or, or whatever, but the point is it can, it can remember a lot more, but there is still a limit. And once again, when you're writing a book, you are, you are going to hit that limit. One thing I found is that ChatGPT does remember patterns. So as you're prompting it, especially when you're writing chapter content, it will keep on responding in that same style as it has in the previous prompts. So you may not lose your styling instructions, but you'll definitely lose some other contextual instructions some background, your outline and that sort of stuff. Now, I don't create a, a book in one prompt. So I'm just going to jump across to my computer now. I'm going to show you how I go about it, how to reprime the best time and give you some options whether you want to split your book into multiple chats or whether you just want to continue and create your book content in a one chat and what you have to do to do that. Okay, so here we are in chat GPT. And as you can see from my chat history, here are the four parts or the four separate chats that I use to generate the first draft for my upcoming book. And the reason why I did that is if you look at the manuscript, it's come up to just under 42,000 words. And when you take my prompting into consideration, so that's my 42,000 words from ChatGPT just for the book itself, that, that isn't in response to any other prompts. It's not my prompts. So overall, maybe 
50,000 words or 60,000 words between my prompting and ChatGPT were generated throughout the process. And that is far in excess of what ChatGPT can remember back in any one chat, okay? So to ensure that everything stayed congruent and consistent, I split up the chats. Now, you don't have to split up the chats, but you will have to reprime. ChatGPT4 has a much larger context window. It can remember back a lot further. But if you're not using ChatGPT4, then you're going to have to reprime on a regular basis if you're using 3.5. And by repriming, I mean, you may just simply have to remind it of your outline as you move through the creation of your book. ChatGPT 3.5, as I said, only remembers back 3,000 words. So you've got a couple of options here. You can either do what I do and create separate chats. So I, I split the, the outline up into related chapters and then I just create those chapters within those chats or you could continue on in the same chat window and just reprime it. One thing I have done in the past is say I'm about to start on a new chapter so I'll put a prompt in saying this is the outline for chapter x and then I'll paste the outline in underneath and then I say do you understand and then that reminds ChatGPT of the outline structure for that chapter. And then I go through and I prompt it to generate the, the, the content. Okay, so that's one thing you can do if you just want to keep on working through the same content window. But I prefer to, to break it down into multiple parts. And another reason for this is then that gives me scope to go back in to that particular part where that chapter is so I can then prompt for more information, more examples, case studies, and and build out anything that that I find that I'm as I'm editing that needs more clarification, and that is still within the context window. But as I said, I created the first draft for my last book using ChatGPT four, which is absolutely amazing. I can I continued to refine my my prompting and my styling to a point where I could take the content straight out of ChatGPT4, put it into an AI content detector, and it was coming up over 90%. It was, it's really good, and it's making the editing process so much easier because it reads so well already. So that's it. So how do you reprime? Well, what I do is I create a separate document. I call it a repriming document. So I go through the initial chat, and I pick out the instructions that I gave it to set up you know the context for the book and the style instructions the outline and that sort of stuff now depending on the size of the outline you may have to split that over ver over several prompts like the outline for from my upcoming book is very long so i actually had to split that into three separate prompts so this is what a repriming document looks like okay might just have to make the screen a little bit smaller Okay, so the first thing is we want to give it the context of your book because obviously it's got to keep on going from where you're at. So saying, I'm writing a book to help a certain audience solve a certain problem by providing a certain solution. And then I also put the title of the book in. Okay, so, so this tells it what you're doing. And then I say, I will give you the outline in X amount of parts. And then I will go through this is this is part one of the outline and then down here i say respond with yes if you understand because i don't want ChatGPT to regurgitate everything i've just entered because that's going to take up words okay that's going to bite into that three thousand or how what if you're using chat gpt or maybe twenty thousand but it's going to bite into that context window so I'm just saying respond yes, and it's just going to come back with yes. And then I say, you no, know, here is the last part of the outline. So now I've fed it the context of the book, the title of the book, who it's for, what it's about, and how we solve the problem. I've given it the outline. And then I come through and I give it my 
styling instructions. So this giving it instructions on how I want it to respond when it's creating content. And this is the latest iteration of the of the prompt. This this is what I found creates the content so close to my own own voice and it basically passes the AI detectors straight out of ChatGPT. Not that I recommend that you just cut and, and paste straight into a book. You still want to go through and polish the manuscript, make it your own. But this is the prompting to get the styling right. And then I'll give it another prompt saying, I want you to act as a professional and write uh, future responses in the style of Tim. Okay, because up, up here, we've actually named the style. Okay, and, so, and if you and if you want these prompts, once again, the, the prompt guide is available via a link below the below the video, and it has all the prompts in there, from where I'm doing my ideation to 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 getting topics for the book, to making sure that the book is comprehensive, to creating the outline, to creating the content, and that sort of stuff. So that is all below this video. Okay, so that's what I do. So I, I just feed that in. Now, what I do when I come back to the second part, because this because this one here is just my my standard prompt. What I do to make sure that the writing continues on in the style of the previous parts, I actually paste in here underneath here for for the sample text that I wanted to analyze. I paste in a sample chapter from the book. So I generally edit up the the introductory chapter. I, know I put it through, I, I rephrase it, I, I, I rewrite it, I, I, I polish it. And so that is obviously going to be the style of the writing for the book. And I put that in as a sample text, and then it will continue on in that style. So that is the important thing about repriming. And the easiest way to reprime is once again, create a, a rep repriming document put anything in here that you want to put in to give it context and just but just don't go overboard because once again if we do a a word count here this priming document is already at you know, 1200 words so this is enough to give the the new chat the context and the information required to carry on and write the book you now if you keep on building it out too much then if you're using ChatGPT 3.5, you're going to fill out your context window with your priming information, and then uh, it will start to forget again pretty quickly. But also, what I do recommend that you do, regardless of whether you're staying and just creating everything in one window, or you are breaking your, your book into parts and generating the content in separate, in separate chats, is when you're starting a new chapter, just come through and say, I put a prompt in saying, here is the outline for chapter one introduction, and then paste the paste the outline in underneath. So then it knows that the following prompts are going to be related to that chapter, and you're going to get a far better result. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please drop them in the chat below, or you can email me at tim at timcooper.au. Don't forget to pick up your prompt guide from the link below. I've also included some links to the other tools and resources that I use in the process of creating books. So you can check those out as well. And I'll see you in the next video. And until then, happy writing.